Hello, everyone. So happy to have you with us tonight and invite you to MSU FCU's Financial Education Seminar Series. And we're happy to bring all of these to you virtually in the comfort of your own home. Now, the seminar series was created with you in mind with the intention to give financial education on a number of relatable topics to help expand your knowledge of finances. Each event is hosted by a member of our financial education department or one of our partners connecting you with resources in our community. We have a number of diverse presentations planned for you this year, and you can explore and register for this year's events by visiting us at msufcu.org forward slash events. Now, tonight's presentation is being recorded, so if you'd like to rewatch them, you're able to do so from our YouTube channel or share any of those if you are unable to attend or if anybody else was unable to attend. We will have time after the presentation to address questions submitted to the chat, and this segment will not be recorded. You may send your inquiries at any time throughout, which will be later answered in the order in which they were received. When sending messages, please be sure to address them to all panelists to ensure that it's properly directed. And once I've obtained that question, I'll then reply to acknowledge that I've successfully received it. This evening, we have an awesome guest joining us uh, to present on exploring college campus resources. So allow me to introduce our host this evening, Zach Barclay, who works for Oakland University Advising. Welcome, Zach. Thank you so much for being here with us and the collaboration. Um, allow you to go ahead and introduce yourself. If you want to tell us a little bit about how you support students at OU um, and some of the things that you're passionate about, and then we can go ahead and lead right into the presentation this evening. Sure, thanks, Lindsay. I'm super happy to, to be here tonight. I'm really excited to be able to partner with you know a fantastic financial institution in MSU FCU. Um, uh, to be able to bring this series um, tonight. So I'm really excited to talk to everyone about um, college resources. So um, I'll actually, you know, kind of skip ahead so you can see what I'm talking about, and then I'll introduce myself because my introduction and who I am is honestly a big part of um, how I'm going to connect um, you guys to the different resources that different colleges and universities offer, right? So um, my presentation this evening is going to be all about campus connection, right? talking about the best resources to ensure a successful college experience, um, but also kind of how you as an individual student um, would go about engaging in those resources. So that's me. Um, my name uh, again is Zach Barclay. Um, I'm one of the senior academic advisors in the first year advising center at Oakland University. Um, I have worked in higher education um, really uh, off and on for in about 12 years from everything from college admissions to registrars, uh, services, financial aid, um, and now I am in academic advising, specifically first year advising. So um, in my current role, part of my expertise, I guess you could say, um, is not just curriculum. It's not just academic planning and classes and schedules. That's part of it. Um, but a big part of what I am an expert on is sort of the experience of the first year student, right? What are all the things that first year students go through um, that maybe other students in, and students as they get closer to graduation don't necessarily have to worry about? Um, and so I've always kind of said that, that first year students have such a unique experience that you, you need an office, you need some individuals that are an expert on the first year and not just academic advising. And that's really what we do in um, the first year advising center. Um, as you can see, and I think this is why uh, something that's really important to me is, is understanding kind of where I come from, my educational background, as you all start to make some choices on your own. Um, I uh, went to Michigan State University and have a Bachelor of Arts in English. I actually studied to be a high school English teacher. Um, that is not the case. I'm clearly not a high school English teacher, um, but I, I went on um, and as I worked um, a number of years in higher education, I received my master's in higher ed leadership. Um, I'm very interested in career development, so career services and kind of understanding, you know, what it takes to, to make sure students can get their career. So I also have um, what's called the GCDF or Global Career Development Facilitator license. And I'm also currently working on my Doctor of Education and Organizational Leadership, 
where I'm focusing on best ways to support our undecided student population. So those groups of students that are, are not sure about what they want to major in and how universities can best serve them. So that's a little bit about me, what my expertise is, what I like um, about uh, higher education and what um, you know, I can offer. Why I think that's important to go through that for me is when we really start to think about getting connected on college campus, different resources you can use during your undergraduate time. Honestly, it really starts with you. And what I mean by that is this presentation is not going to be just a list of a bunch of campus resources and where you can click on them and view a website and okay, this is this is offered. This is what I can do. Um, there'll be that too. Um, you'll be able to see some really good resources, but I think before you utilize resources in your undergraduate time, uh, it, it's almost more important to understand um, who you are and the resources that you need. So what I mean by that is, is, is kind of finding the right balance of academics and being successful that way in, in your social life and social growth um, it, when, when you're an undergraduate student is really less about looking at a list of resources, looking at a list of options and picking something, right? Hoping that just something works out and sounds cool. It's more about understanding yourself, yourself as a student, yourself as an individual, as a, as a human, what your interests are, what your skills are or the skills that you might want to have, your personality type, kind of, you know, um, who you are, your sense of humor, things of that nature, and probably most importantly, your values, right? What your current values are and what you value for your future, right? When you understand a little bit more deeply about who you are as a person and the things that you need, that's going to help you kind of decide the types of resources that you want to engage in or need to engage in to have a successful undergraduate experience. So this presentation is gonna be kind of all about the, the four power words, I call them, that are on your screen right now. Um, explore, empower, discover, and connect. I think these four power words really describe the ways in which students should engage in uh, campus resources as they go through their undergraduate time. All right. So the first couple are explore and empower. Um, why these are, are the most important, um, or two of the most important really, um, is because this is where you get to answer some questions about yourself, right? So when you think about exploring and empowering yourself to make decisions, right, you're starting to ask yourself, who is my go-to person, for one? I think it's really important for all college students as they go in to find out who the one person they can go to is. Every college campus, whether it's a community college, it's a four-year research institution, it's a small liberal arts school, every, every place has a, a particular person that is sort of assigned to you as your go-to. Many times that is your first year academic advisor, right? Uh, but it could also be counselor. It could also be a mentor in a, in a particular program that, that you're um, a part of on your campus, right? But part of that initial exploration process is really finding out who your go-to person is. Another really critical question as you're exploring and empowering yourself is where do I go, right? It's important to understand um, you know, your, your space, your environment, and familiarizing yourself with the campus you're on is going to be really important as you sort of navigate different resources. Why am I here? Also really important, right? Um, hopefully that you either have or you will um, choose a institution that is right for you. And we'll talk a little bit later about, um, you know, resources to help with that. But, you know, looking at different majors offers, being strategic about the courses that you select, right? That's, that's the kind of your why. What do I need, right? This is really important. Um, you, we, we don't just assume that every student needs everything that we offer. So kind of understanding who you are yourself and learning how to advocate for yourself and what your individual needs are, are really, really important when you're building those exploration and empowerment skills. And then kind of the big overall question is, am I supposed to be here, right? And what that means is how you fit in some of the soft skill things that are important. You might be a 4.0 student, right? And you might be able to, you know, go to some of the resources with ease, but, you know, perhaps it's learning and, and, and mastering soft skills needed to be successful. We'll talk about some of those as well and resources attached to those. Um, Lindsay will hopefully provide a link to a website that I wanted to show you. Um, 
that will kind of show you how Oakland University specifically helps with this. Oakland University has this really, really great um, kind of, I call it a one-stop shop resource. It's at oakland.edu slash advising. And I call it a one-stop shop because it truly has almost everything you would need as both a prospective and a first-year student at OU. This is a great place to get quick links, as you see over on the right-hand side here, um, to things like finding your academic advisor, um, different advising offices that might exist, understanding kind of the different components of your degree, like general education. Everyone's kind of heard that term, but what really is it? A link to career services, the honors college, academic student organizations, um, and some other institutional, you know, individual institutional supports that might exist at different colleges. Pretty much every institution would have a website kind of like this that's all encompassing to all the different links you need. I also love this page because as you start to explore um, and empower yourself to make some decisions, part of that is actually looking at the undergraduate programs that your the institutions you're considering offers. So at Oakland University, we have this really comprehensive um, undergraduate programs tab that lists all of the undergraduate majors in alphabetical order, where you can start to actually look at the different programs we have um, and probably more easily discard the ones you know you don't want to do because it can be quite daunting to look at a list of 130 majors and just pick one. Um, but to start to start to look at the different things that the institutions offer. Um, and then, you know, right, you can click on one. So let's say communication sounds interesting to you or um, it, it's at the very least something you want to learn more about. Um, it takes you right to a page where you can look at different major requirements, the actual classes you take in this major, as well as a four year sample schedule. So you can see what you'd actually be doing until you graduate. Okay. So this is one resource that OU has um, in particular that kind of helps in those beginning stages of exploring and empowering your decision making on things. Um, but pretty much every institution would have something similar where you can even before you're a student start to look at these things. Okay, so a little bit more specifics about what I mean about empowering yourself to explore different options, right? When I talk about your go-to person, a lot of times that is your academic advisor. And what I mean by go-to is that we do a lot more than just course schedule planning. Um, we help with um, overall major and career exploration. Um, we help get students connected to different academic resources that might be on campus if a student is struggling. We act as a liaison to faculty and other departments around campus that can kind of speak on your behalf. We're also just sort of what I call kind of humorous, but what I call a dumpster of information. Um, we're the go to person for pretty much anything that you might need to, to know about about the college going experience. So, even if you have a question and you just don't know who to ask it to, you could always ask your academic advisor and because they're your go to person, they'll be able to direct you to the right resources. I mentioned knowing where you're where you um, where you're at on campus and kind of your environment around you. Um, resources like uh, campus tours that are generally held in the undergraduate admissions office at all schools um, are, are really fun and educational. Uh, first ways to sort of get a feel not only if that campus environment is right for you, if you're a prospective student, but also if you are a current student, right? That's a good way for you to know where the different classroom buildings are or, oh, that I was wondering where the library is, like that's where it is and you can, kind of along with having a campus map, kind of better understand your environment. I think when, when students feel very familiar and very comfortable on a, a college campus, especially if it's a large college campus and they know how to navigate, right? Um, and that could be, honestly, uh, you know, one of the best um, ways to know how to get to and from classes, right? Um, a funny story, my, my freshman year at Michigan State, um, I had a class in, in one of the buildings on campus called Hubbard Hall, and it was like, a, I think it was an 8.30 or 9 a.m. class, and I rolled out of bed like 15 minutes before, 10, 15 minutes before. Don't do that, by the way. Um, but, and I went to campus, and I was walking. I was like, okay, time to go to class. It's my first day, and I opened up my, we, we didn't have uh, smartphones back then, unfortunately, but I opened up this, this kind of pamphlet that had a campus map and where my classes were that I was given by my advisor. And I was like, okay, Hubbard Hall. And I realized 
that's like a 25, 30 minute walk. And I was very late for that first class because I didn't really understand that because it was such a big campus that getting from where I lived in my residence hall to the classroom building was going to take me a long time and I had to plan that. So getting a campus tour and using campus maps, really, really important, especially as a new student or a prospective student to get a feel of your surroundings to make sure it's a good fit, but also kind of know where you're going once you're here. I showed you the undergraduate majors um, tab because I think it's really important um, also to understand and explore the different majors that are available to you. Um, part of kind of being a first year student especially is kind of figuring that all out. So you might be someone that is still exploring majors, kind of undecided, or maybe you've decided on a major, but you're thinking about other things, really understanding what's available to you um, as, as a prospective student and what is still available to you as potentially redeciding student once you're here, um, really important. So that resource, knowing how to look at the undergraduate programs and know what a school office, very, very critical for you. In terms of learning how to advocate for yourself and knowing what you need, what I mean by that is perhaps you're a student that, um, you know, currently sees a therapist or a counselor, or you maybe struggle with some mental health issues, or perhaps you're a student that um, has in high school an IEP um, and you want to know how your institution can support that, right? Understanding your individual needs are important because chances are your institution has some supports there, um, but you have to, in many cases, self-identify that you want to use those services and reach out. There's not going to be necessarily a bunch of people calling you to use these resources. So very quickly learning to advocate for yourself are very important. So some of those things I'm talking about are like the counseling office. So um, all public institutions are required to have um, at least some semblance of um, mental health counseling on campus. Oakland University has our awesome OUCC or the Oakland University Counseling Center um, where we actually offer several free um, sessions to undergraduate students. Um, along with many group sessions and workshops that are available. Um, you know, your mental and, and uh, wellness is, is so important. Um, so understand that that is a resource that you can use even when you're away from home. Most universities have a very comprehensive disability support services office. So although it's not directly tied to an IEP in high school, there are a lot of accommodations that students can request through the disability support services office. Um, to be able to help them feel a little bit more successful in the classroom. That could be having a reader, or it could be having someone in your class be a note taker for you, um, extra time on exams, things of that nature. Um, but again, right, it takes you kind of reaching out to that office and self-identifying to those needs. So using some of these resources to really understand what you need as an individual student will be really critical to your success. And then I think kind of to my last point on the previous slide, really um, kind of these soft skill things, right? You could be a 4.0 student, you could be rocking out in your classes, but do you know how to write an email to your faculty, to an instructor of your class, right? Um, do you know how to write a professional sounding email in general? It's not like a text message. That's something I think we all struggle with in the age of technology and, and social media, right? Um, even, even help with learning how to advocate for yourself. I, I think one of the number one things that a lot of undergraduate students tell me that they struggle with or that, you know, they worry about is how to ask questions or they're scared to ask questions to people because maybe it's a dumb question, right? So how to, to communicate as an undergraduate student, um, those are all things that um, your advisor, that faculty, different resources on campus can definitely help you um, improve upon as well. And then the other two power words, discover and connect. Um, really, really important, um, uh, and maybe even more important than kind of figuring out, just exploring and, and discovering kind of who you are, are what is out there that's not just sort of a, a transactional uh, support system for you, right? What else can you do outside of the classroom to engage? So discover, what I mean by that is keeping an open mind about what is available to you and stay curious about any opportunity. Because I think once you, once you do that, you're able to connect, which means starting to build your network of people, places, organizations, and, and different ideas that will help you kind of grow as an individual. So I think a big part of what helps you discover and connect are getting involved on campus, right? So um, I'm gonna kind of show you Oakland University's Office for Student Involvement. Um, I think Lindsay also probably threw that link in the chat. 
Um, but this is OU's version of sort of um, our uh, clubs, student organizations, leadership opportunities, really anything that you can do to maybe outside of just classes, get involved in, in, in your uh, university community. Um, and so I love our, our website in particular because right away you can actually see the people that would be helping you out. And right away you can see the different student organizations available. So we have some, some big ones. Clearly there's student, things like student govern, government and activities um, board, student program board that kind of like plans all the fun events and goings on around campus. Our student, the student newspaper, the Oakland Post, club sports and fraternity and sorority life. Um, but we have a system that's called Grizzorgs, where you can actually see all the different registered student organizations on campus and kind of see when they meet and potentially, you know, look at ones that you might be interested in joining, or at least going to a meeting to see what it's all about. Um, pretty much every institution will have some semblance of this. At OU, we have over 300 registered student organizations, right? And so it's cliche to say there's something for everybody, but truly there really is. Um, you know, and, and what's the cool thing about that is if there's not something that you see or something you have an idea about that doesn't exist, you can actually create your own club or student organization and get members to join that and um, have a faculty or staff advisor for that club or student organization. Um, so these are all the, the, the kind of, of things that, that are non-academic related, but are just as, if not more important, um, to engage in as resources to, to make sure you have a successful time in college. So to kind of expand off on that, kind of what I mean, um, there's two types of clubs and organizations um, on most college campuses. One are the academic student orgs. So what I mean by that is pretty much every major or academic unit um, at a college or university will have a specific organization attached to that, right? So if you're a criminal justice major, there's a criminal justice club or organization, right? If you are, you know, biology, but you're really, you're pre-med, you want to go to medical school, and that's really why you're in, in undergrad, there is a pre-med society on campus, pre-law society, right? Graphic design club. So typically there, there are these academic organizations that are attached to your majors um, that are really, really great for one of two reasons. One, if you are undecided on a major, it's a good way to sort of, on the social end of things, see if that community is right for you to join. But then two, right, once you have declared that major, it's a great way to kind of um, kind of uh, socialize with like-minded academic folks, other students, your peers that are interested in the same things, um, work on different projects that other students that are doing or get out in the community a little bit. There's also social organizations, right? So these are like your social clubs, the chess club, the film club, um, things of that nature that you can join that are of interest to you. Greek life is huge, right? Um, most, at least mid-sized universities have some semblance of sororities and fraternities that you can join. So if you wanted to kind of engage that way socially um, in, your, in, your, in your time at, uh, at a college or university, that's a great opportunity. And then there's also things that I think people don't think about, right? I was a big band kid in high school and in college, actually. I was in the Spartan Marching Band at Michigan State, and that's primarily how I identified socially um, in, in that large student organization. You know, my time there really defined my time there. Um, and people don't realize that, that uh, even if you're not um, a Division I athlete, you can join intramural sports and play soccer if you love soccer in, in high school. You can join band or choir or different musical ensembles if that was your thing in high school. So there's also a continuation of who you were as a person, as a human being in high school that you can still engage in at the college level by joining some of the more social organizations. Volunteering is huge for me. I think that uh, both for your um, kind of time engaging um, in, in, you know, your university time, but also kind of what it can do for your resume and, and um, career options, volunteering, community service, fantastic opportunities around different campuses for you to do. Attend events. I think that part of getting connected um, and using the resource like an office for student involvement is attending as much as you can, right? Uh, typically, there's, um, you know, university held events that are like concerts or maybe there's a comedy night or, um, you know, there's sort of a, a big expo of something happening that could even be tied to your major or careers, right? Career fairs, things of that nature. So 
being in the know about and attending events around campus make you feel more connected, more engaged, and um, that you're not just here to take classes. And then lastly, I think this is still included in this, but a big resource, is the resource that most universities have that I think is a great opportunity to really diversify your education experience is studying away or studying abroad. So I'm sure you've all kind of heard about what that is, but opportunities to you know, leave your college or university, leave the state of Michigan, leave the country to be able to have a, a really cool, um, diverse educational experience that gives you a lot of cool global context that both helps you academically because you can earn college credit for it, but also changes you as a human being, right? Gives you a different perspective and allows you to bring that back. Um, and so many students that have uh, taken part in those opportunities kind of come back feeling a little bit more connected to their university, connected to their education, giving them that reason why, right? So that's kind of what we mean about discover and connect and all the different kind of outside the classroom things that you can do. So why all of what I just said, why is that important, right? What, what are the benefits to that, right? You might be saying, Zach, well, I'm just, you know, I just really want my graphic design degree. Why do I need to do all this other stuff, right? So I think there's three main reasons why it's important to utilize different campus resources in order to, to feel more connected and engaged. Number one, you will feel more successful and you will be more successful. There is research out there that shows that students that are engaged, students that are involved in at least one extracurricular, uh, uh, extracurricular activity um, are, are more academically successful. There's actual studies that show that um, with involvement come higher grades um, and, and better outcomes that way. I also think uh, a part of being successful is understanding um, what you can do with your major, right? So getting out there in some of those academic clubs or organizations or doing some job shadowing or informational interviews or volunteering in a field that interests you, you get a better understanding of what you can do with, with your field of study that you've chosen. And then I also think it's important for the, for the critical relationships that you can build that are going to help your future, right? So you never know who you're going to meet, who you're going to be able to collaborate with um, and connect with um, that will help you down the line. Getting engaged, staying engaged, and using resources, uh, there's also a connection to being a competitive applicant for jobs when you graduate, right? So a big part of, if not the biggest part of why someone goes to college is so to train in a particular field so you can um, go on and be a contributing member of society, right? Get a job, have a career, and build that. And so what you do outside the classroom sometimes means even more to employers than what you're doing inside the classroom. Um, a good example of this is um, becoming a lawyer. If you were a pre-law student, right, if you want to be an attorney and go to law school someday, law school admissions are really unique in that, yes, they look at grades. Yes, they look at, you know, your, your score on the LSAT exam. But a big part of law school admissions is kind of who you are as a holistic student. And what I mean by that is what were your involvement, right? Did you join student Congress? Do you have leadership um, experiences? Did you have a summer internship working in a law firm, right? You could have all the awesome grades in the world in your classes, but if you don't have anything else to build on that resume to differentiate yourself on a law school app application, um, you know, you're not really gonna be that competitive candidate. Same thing goes for different jobs. Employers these days are looking less and less at the overall degree that you have less and less at your transcript and grades and more about who you who you are in an interview. How do you sell yourself in terms of your experiences that you have and how those experiences can help you bring something new to the table for that employer. So, you know, being engaged and, and using some of these resources to feel connected to campus are also going to help you build a stronger resume. This is also something that uh, career services can help with. So another fantastic resource that all universities will have is a comprehensive career services office that will help you with things like writing a cover letter and building your resume for particular opportunities, right? Applying for on-campus jobs, um, um, even off-campus jobs, right? That's what they're there for. Many students think that they use career services in their senior year or when they graduate, but career services departments typically really love to work with first year students as well to give them some of those exploration um, skills from the, the very beginning. The earlier you engage with career services, the better for, for being a competitive applicant to whatever your goals are. And then lastly, you know, is your own identity development, right? So part of going to college is not just to get the degree, not just to have fun in different clubs, right? But also, you know, 
how you're growing, you know, and becoming an adult human being, coming into your own and affirming what you're interested in and what skills you want to have and understanding what you value for your future. That's all a part of what we call identity development, right? And sitting in a classroom, taking notes and taking exams is not the only thing that's going to help with that, right? Getting out there and engaging in different resources, um, getting connected and engaged around campus are really what's going to kind of make you stand out, make you feel better about your future as well. There's two other kind of, um, I guess, categories of resources that I wanted to talk about real quick that are kind of adjacent to this. Um, one of them is just um, the transactional academic resources that all universities will have. Um, and, and those are things like tutoring, right? So um, there's a, a huge net of negative connotation around going to tutoring. I think that is just from growing up in the schools, right? We, we think if you're doing poorly, you get a tutor. And so there's sort of a connection there. And, at the college level, it's it's actually quite different, right? We encourage tutoring, um, you know, even if you're doing really, really well, right? Um, I, I kind of like to say that, uh, you know, use the example that tutoring is, is um, you know, not an antibiotic that you take when you're really, really sick. It's the multivitamin you take every day to prevent sickness, right? It's, it's something that you can use proactively and it's encouraged to use weekly, monthly, semesterly, um, in order to be successful, right? So tutoring centers, um, getting a peer tutor or a professional tutor that the university will provide. Um, typically, in most cases, this is free of charge for a student and, and can really, really help uh, make you feel a little bit better about your classes, especially some of those high, um, you know, what we would call high failed rate, rate classes like biology and math and some of those ones that students often struggle with. Engaging in tutoring service right from the beginning is going to make you more comfortable using those. A lot of institutions also have academic coaching. Um, Oakland University has this as well. Um, this is not tutoring. What's cool about coaching is it's more about some of the um, soft school things we talked about. So you'll learn study strategies or time management skills, um, how to organize your calendar, right? And, and, and be on top of your assignments and exams and when to study and kind of map out what your weeks and semesters look like. So that's not just on your own to do. There, there are actual resources that will help with this. And it's usually called academic coaching or something like that. Then if right, if things like writing or math are not your things, right? OU and most universities have like an entire writing center that will help you from everything from brainstorming ideas of what to write about in, in on papers uh, to uh, editing and proofreading to references and citations. They'll literally look at a final product before you turn an assignment in and make sure it's all good to go. Same thing with math help. There's a uh, really comprehensive math tutoring, a lot of math resources um, and math workshops, knowing that that is a subject of struggle for a lot of undergraduate students and is needed for so many majors that there are a, a lot of separate math help as well. A big variable here is also faculty support, right? Know that your instructors are on your side. I think there's sometimes students are a little bit scared of their faculty because they're like, oh, Dr. Smith, and they're, you know, have this high degree and they research and they do all these things, but they, they chose a teaching career because they're passionate about student success. They're there for you and maybe one of your best and honestly most untapped resource that an undergraduate student can have. Connecting with faculty, um, both academically and socially, is so important for um, individual students feeling like they're successful and then also it, it typically translates in that higher grade. There's also research that shows that students that engage with and are communicative with their faculty and their instructors of their classes tend to get overall higher grades in their classes as well. And then something that's near and dear to my heart are financial resources, right? This is a, um, you know, a presentation that is hosted by the Michigan State University Federal Credit Union. And so likewise, going to college is, is a very expensive thing. We all know that even as a higher education professional, I'm, you know, we're very transparent with students that, yeah, it's, it's expensive. Tuition, it's, it's expensive. Housing, it's expensive. But there are a lot of financial resources available um, on most college campuses um, that will kind of help you make sure you're making good financial decisions for yourself too. First of all, right, every college has a financial aid office. Um, a lot of times it's called student financial services. That's what it's called here at OU um, or the financial aid or financial aid and scholarships. But really, they're the office that can help you understand the aid that is available to you. So that could be things from the FAFSA, the free application 
for federal student aid where you could be eligible for different grants, where you'll get some information on student loans available to you, but they're also able to talk about institutional awards, right? So each college and university typically has scholarships and grants available for you to apply for, so they can help you understand what's out there, what you can apply for, what you're eligible for, and definitely help you maximize those awards to help you know, make sure that college is as cost effective as possible. I think one thing that they do a lot that is untapped as well is student loan education. These, the financial aid office at all colleges and universities, they're experts on federal student loans. That's a huge topic right now with federal you know, loan forgiveness out there and kind of it being a, a kind of a national crisis right now is people are scared of, of borrowing and there's a right way and a wrong way to do it. And I think that takes a little bit of education. So using your college or university's financial aid office to really fully understand how federal student loans work, what to borrow, what not to do, and kind of all the little things and details around that, really, really great resource. Many financial or many um, higher ed institutions also have um, a, a financial institution attached to it, right? So many community colleges have um, banks or credit unions that they partner with. Um, Oakland University is very fortunate to have OU uh, Credit Union, which is also Michigan State University Federal Credit Union, where we have a branch right here on campus. Um, and so there's opportunities for students to create an account and benefit from student focused products um, and financial literacy programs, kind of like what, what Lindsay does you know, for the credit union. Um, they will help you become independent thinkers and, and planners for your financial future too. So know that everybody that works at a college knows that cost is a huge talking point and a huge consideration and that we're here to help and there are resources for um, you to um, kind of engage in to, to make sure you're making the best financial decisions for you throughout your time um, in college. Ooh, that was a lot. So I hope that was informational. Um, before I kind of wrap up with the last couple of things, I want to kind of leave you with this quote that I think is really all encompassing of um, what uh, all the things I'm talking about and why it's important to use resources and get engaged. Uh, this quote is by Elizabeth F. Barkley, who is um, a professor of music actually at a small liberal arts college in the United States. And uh, what she said about student engagement is that student engagement is the product of motivation and active learning. It's a product rather than a sum because it will not occur if either element is missing. And so what I mean by that and kind of the ultimate point I wanna get to is you can't just go to college and expect resources to be there, right? Um, using resources to feel successful is, is a shared accountability between myself, someone like myself, like an academic advisor or other staff and faculty on campus, and you as a student, which is why it's so important to go back to my first point. It's, it's so important for you to understand who you are and what your individual needs are, because it's going to take a bit of motivation and active learning on your part. You have to actively engage in these things and be really good critical thinkers about what you need and what you want um, as you go about your time in college. So uh, I wanted to make sure I share that quote because I think it's very important to understand that it's more than just um, guiding you through these resources. They're there. You have to do a little bit of, you know, kind of uh, active learning on your end to figure out what, what you need and what you want to engage in. So. I'll leave you kind of with this. My last little point is choosing wisely, right? When you're thinking about choosing the college you want to go to, resources should be a big part of that decision, right? For example, if you have an IEP in high school and the college you're considering and you're really pumped about because you love their football team or their colors or their campus is beautiful, right? If they don't have a comprehensive disability support services office, why are you considering them for your college career, right? struggling with writing like if you just english classes writing composition not your thing before you go to that college check out how good their writing center is do they offer writing consultants do they have those writing help services right so kind of understanding the resources available to you at different colleges before you go there will also help you kind of feel more connected um, because you're going to know that that place is right for you because they already have some of those things that are going to make you successful So to sum it all up, right, connection equals success, okay? There's value in using as many campus resources as possible, right? Many, if not all of them are free and really only exist for you. There's no benefit to us for to have all these resources, right? They're all for you to use and engage in. And really, in right, as we kind of are, are in the midst of 
2023 and, and evolving kind of world around us and evolving education, it's not enough just to go class and do homework anymore, right? College is a time for more holistic growth for yourself and campus resources and getting involved are really crucial for you to feel successful um, and to make sure that your, your time in college is really meaningful. That's all I have, Lindsay, that's my presentation. So I will definitely take any questions that anybody has. Um, and thank you so much for being here with us, Zach. This was an amazing presentation to really kind of help us learn how we can, you know, reflect, take that moment, kind of decide like who we are, what direction we want to go in, not only academically, but like really hone in on who we want to be moving forward, what's going to help us get there. Um, I love how you brought in the pieces of really that identity development, because I think that's what so many students do once they hit that college age is it's really an identity journey um, venturing out on your own a lot of us for the first time um, and it can bring about a lot of awesome change and opportunities like you said the more that we engage the more career opportunities will come our way um, obviously an engaged student is a successful student so so glad that you are able to hear be here and join us this evening to really connect that for us. Um, for those of you who came in late, um, or if anyone would like to rewatch tonight's presentation, we do invite you to go to our YouTube channel where we have our seminar series playlist available. Uh, tonight's recording should be available within about three weeks of today's date. And for anyone not staying for the discussion portion, I do invite you to take our survey that'll automatically open at the close of tonight's event to allow us to consider your feedback. Furthermore, don't forget to join us for um, some of our upcoming seminar series events. So uh, next week on Tuesday, April 11th, we are giving a presentation on navigating social security retirement planning. So if you know anyone near and dear to your heart, or if that might be you who is interested in attending, uh, please feel free to join us for that. And if you're in the Lansing area, we welcome you to visit our Farm Lane branch, where we'll learn more about how to hatch our hustle on Thursday, April 13th. So both of those events happening next week, we hope to see you either there in person or virtually right here on WebEx. We're now going to go ahead and stop the recording and address any questions that have been submitted to the chat. Just to remind y'all, we're gonna answer those in the order that we have received them. And if you have a question you would like to submit and have me forward that over to Zach so he can discuss a, an answer for you live, um, please remember to send those messages to all panelists to ensure that I receive it. Well, and again, we'll go ahead and wrap up. Thank you everyone so much for being here tonight.